First tonight, our country is facing a crisis of confidence. Most people have not connected the dots we're going to try to tonight. The most dire threat to free and fair elections in the history of the United States, it is now coming from within. We'll explain it all. Uh, by coordinating with the DNC and big tech, top brass at our own FBI have been putting their thumbs on the scales of our elections now for years, the last two presidential elections in particular, and the mob and the media are totally and completely complicit through outright censorship, through lying, through disinformation, not vetting candidates. They all deliberately work hand in hand uh, to help elect Democrats all across the country. But thanks to several new investigations, a handful of reporters and a guy by the name of Elon Musk, that's right, the billionaire, uh, the full extent of this corruption is now beginning to come to light. And tonight, we're going to walk you through this step by step. It may seem complex. But it's also actually pretty simple. We'll begin tonight with Elon Musk. After Twitter's bombshell document dump on Friday that centered around Twitter's 2020 pro Biden censorship campaign, well, Musk said that all of this during an open discussion on Saturday at a roundtable over the weekend. Take a listen. Clearly, <laughs> if, if, if Twitter is doing one team's bidding before an election, shutting down dissenting voices, um, on a pivotal election, that is the very definition of election interference. I mean, what the hell else would you? Of course, it's like, yes, um, you know, that, that frankly, Twitter was acting like an arm of the Democratic National Committee. It was absurd. Well, that would be election interference and an arm of the Democratic Party, but it gets worse. According to Musk, Twitter was not acting alone. Many in the media mob were not being truthful to you, the American people. Shocker. Take a look. Well, I think uh, those people should be looking in the mirror and wondering why they were deceptive. Uh, why did they deceive the American public? And, and instead of trying to redirect blame to Matt Tiedi, they seem to be accepting some responsibility themselves for not being truthful to the American public. Now, there's no doubt that many so-called journalists are now downplaying Musk's revelations because they were, in fact, complicit in, twi in Twitter's censorship efforts. In 2020, short shortly after Twitter blocked any and all sharing of the Hunter Biden laptop report from the New York Post, NPR proudly announced that it would not be covering Hunter's laptop from hell because, quote, we don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories, and we don't want to waste the listeners' and readers' time on stories that are just pure distractions. Now, countless other, quote, journalists, they falsely refer to the story as Russian disinformation or hack material. Now, this gave cover to Twitter, which was blocking the report without any legitimate reason. According to newly released internal documents, Twitter blocked the Hunter Biden story, the laptop story, on the basis that it could be hack material and their hack material policy. But that policy reportedly requires that law enforcement find evidence of a hack. That never happened because the laptop was not hacked. It was Hunter's laptop. Even Twitter itself admitted that the hacked excuse would not hold up. According to one former employee, quote, hacking was the excuse, but within a few hours, pretty much everyone realized that that wasn't going to hold, but no one had the guts to reverse it. And yet Twitter utilized an emergency tool only used for the removal of child pornography to block users from sharing the report even over private messages. Now, Twitter officials also eagerly worked with the Biden campaign to remove other objectionable, objectionable posts. Uh, this internal document from October 2020 features five links that the Biden team wanted removed. Three hours later, a Twitter employee responded, Handle these. Now, keep in mind, journalist Matt Taibbi reviewed these internal documents. And to be clear, Matt, in no way acting on behalf of the Republicans. But this scandal is not about conservative or liberal ideology. It's a story about what is systemic political bias. It's a story about censorship. It's a story about propaganda and misinformation that is now being institutionalized in big tech companies that are seriously harming our country. And the next level of this is our own FBI's involvement. And that makes it far worse. And I'll get into this in a second. And it goes well beyond the Hunter Biden laptop scandal. Take a look. All accounts that were requested to have things taken down by the DNC and by the Biden campaign 
even ones that have nothing to do with the Hunter Biden laptop, if they will also be released. Uh, intent is to release uh, all the files. Um, so it's not like anything that's hidden. This is like whatever Stasi files or um, you know, Truth and Reconciliation. Like Nelson Mandela would say, you know, it's, it's, if you want reconciliation, there must be truth. So um, that's, that's the intent here. Intent here is to just make it, make it clear what was happening and provide transparency about the past. Now, additional documents are forthcoming, and we can expect more of the same. And according to Taibbi, almost all of Twitter's censorship favored the Democratic Party. Now, that's because, in part, almost everyone that worked at Twitter was a hardcore liberal Democrat. In 2020, over 98 percent of political donations from Twitter employees, they went to Democrats. Now, this year, that number was up to 99.73 percent. That's nearly 100 percent. And that brings us to one former Twitter employee in particular. His name, you've heard it before, James Baker. You might recall in 2020, he was working as Twitter's deputy general counsel. And at the time, Baker advised Twitter's staff that it was, quote, reasonable to assume that the Hunter Biden story is the product of hacked material and urged, quote, caution. But a few years earlier, back in 2016, well, he was with the FBI, and he was the top legal advisor for the FBI. And then Baker, through all caution to the wind, reportedly disseminated Hillary Clinton's dirty disinformation Russian dossier to the entire media. This is the same dirty dossier put together by ex-foreign spy Christopher Steele on behalf of the DNC and the Clinton campaign. It could not be corroborated or verified, even after the FBI offered Steele $1 million in early October of 2016 to back up anything or prove or corroborate anything in his salacious claims. Now, that's because the dossier was for always made up. It was a farce, unverified and unverifiable. It was filled to the brim with actual Russian disinformation, uh, or bar talk, as they called it. But that did not stop the FBI from using the dossier on four separate FISA warrants to gain access to the Trump campaign, their transition team, and the Trump White House, even after Steele couldn't corroborate it and collect his million dollars. And then after his main source, Danchenko, said it was false and said it was bar talk, they still lied to the FISA courts. They said it was something it was not. They said it was verified. They signed their name to it. What do you think would happen to any of you if you lied to a judge in a court of law? Think about this. The FBI committed FISA fraud. They did it knowingly with a fake document to spy on a candidate and then a president. But in 2020, they seemingly made no effort to investigate a laptop that they had had for 11 long months that, in fact, not only implicated Hunter Biden, but now the president, then candidate Joe Biden, in a variety of serious pay-to-play schemes. In fact, on April 28, 2021, when the FBI raided Rudy Giuliani's residence for whatever reason, they didn't take his copy of the Hunter Biden hard drive, even though he offered it to them. They said they didn't want it. That's because they already had possession of the laptop for nearly a year before the election, and it was handed over by the computer repair guy, John Paul Mac Isaac. It was handed over by the computer repair guy, so he, he gave it to them. He will join us, by the way, in a few moments. The FBI had plenty of time to corroborate in that 11-month period of time well, the authenticity of Hunter's laptop, the information on the hard drive, the crimes that are obviously committed on that laptop, and they did nothing. Instead, they heavily suggested the laptop scandal was part of a Russian disinformation campaign. Now, here's where the FBI's involvement, most people have not put this together, gets very serious. Now we know and now we have learned that the FBI, as reported by FoxNews.com, met with Twitter and other big tech companies weekly in the weeks leading up to the 2020 presidential election. In fact, we're now learning that the FBI met with Twitter and other big tech companies. And according to Twitter's former head of sites uh, integrity, many of these meetings involve warnings about, quote, hack and leak operations by state actors, with some involving Hunter Biden, likely in October. One FBI agent recently testified that the Bureau used these weekly meetings to lobby social media platforms to change their terms of service and then censor content. Now, clearly, the upper echelon of the FBI were putting their fingers on the scale. They did it in 2016. They did it again in 2020. 
And we now know that Hunter's laptop from hell is very real. They had all of Hunter's emails, all of his videos doing drugs and hanging out with women of the evening, shall we call them, and how Joe Biden was directly implicated and involved in his son's shady international business deals. Take a look. And now to another key figure in this impeachment story, Joe Biden's son, Hunter. This morning, his business deals during his father's time as vice president are drawing new scrutiny. Joe Biden uh, himself, uh, two of his family members, his son, Hunter Biden, of course, uh, and his brother, James Biden, uh, have received millions of dollars uh, from politically connected Chinese uh, interests. And I remember looking at Jim Biden and saying, how are you guys getting away with this? Like, aren't you concerned? And he sort of looked at I mean, he laughed a little bit and said, uh, plausible deniability. A 2013 trip to China getting new attention this morning, not for what Joe Biden did, but for who he brought with him. His son, Hunter, joining the then vice president on the official visit to Beijing. Of course, we have uh, one email back on May 20th, 2017, uh, where uh, somebody's writing, uh, this is actually James Gillier writing to uh, Tony Boblinski, don't mention Joe being involved. It's only when you are face to face. I know you know that, but they are paranoid. Unknown to the press back then, Hunter Biden was forming a Chinese private equity fund, planning to raise money, including from Chinese investors. Years later, Hunter Biden acknowledged that during the trip, he met with a Chinese banker, which his spokesperson describes as a social visit, not a business one. The real conspiracy here was the Democrats, big tech, big media, keeping this story from the American people just days before the most important election we have, election for president of the United States, election for who's going to be the commander in chief. And you have a family involved with all kinds of foreign business interests, and we don't get to hear that story. Still no consequences for Hunter, no investigation into Joe, no early morning raids, no process crimes connecting anyone in Biden's uh, orbit at all. And just like there was no search warrant or charges or consequences for Hillary Clinton when she mishandled top secret classified information, no prosecutor we were told would prosecute. Forgive me if I'm a little cynical and roll my eyes when they raided Mar-a-Lago looking for top secret classified information or accused Donald Trump of collusion. No prosecutors ever prosecute all of these things uh, because, what, he's a Republican and he's not a Democrat? Do we have a two-tiered system of justice? Uh, it looks like we do. The FBI, the DNC, the big tech, the media mob must all be held accountable before our wonderful American republic is ruined forever. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.